What is up, Karatex? In this video, we'll be talking about the changes and additions that came with the new San Andreas Mercenaries DLC update. I will leave a link to the Rockstar Newswire and patch notes down below in the pinned comment if I can check it out for yourself. But anyways, let's get started with some of the obvious and major additions, and then work our way to the more detailed stuff. Also, the additions that are exclusive to current gen, which are PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S, will be discussed at the end of the video since I sort of want to separate that for those of you on old gen. So, first off, we have the six new Avenger missions, which are called Project Overthrow. In terms of new vehicles, we have one car on Legendary Motorsport website, four on the Severn San Andreas website, and two on the Warstock website, and of course, updated customization for the Avenger. So that totals seven new vehicles for day one content. Now keep in mind that there are also 7 unreleased drip feed vehicles for this update, even though it's technically 5 since 2 of them are bicycles. So if you guys haven't already seen my video on the drip feed cars, I will leave that linked above here as well. So in total between day 1 vehicles and drip feed, we have a total of 14 new vehicles for this entire update, which honestly isn't all that great compared to past DLCs especially when you consider that two of them are bicycles and three of them are aircraft. So that means in terms of like actual cars, we only received nine for this entire update. So not all that great. Also, we only received one new gun in this DLC, which is the tactical SMG, which can only be accessed by buying it from the gun van. Continuing to business changes for the smugglers run hangar business, Rockstar has added a new staff member called Rooster, and he can actually source cargo for you, similar to what Rockstar did with the CEO crate business last year. Plus, they've added new land-based source and sell missions, which you can choose from at the main computer, so if you want to keep everything on the ground, you actually can. Plus, they've added a Mark II weapon workshop to the hangar that's included with the workshop upgrade. You can now call Ron if you actually want to source crates without having to go back to the hangar. However, you actually won't be able to specify exactly what type of goods you want to source, so it's probably best to still go back to the hangar and sort of specify what you want. Also, an access point for flight school has been added in your hangar, which I think is just awesome. But even if you don't use flight school, this basically allows you to instantly teleport straight to the main airport, which can be very useful, especially if you own the hangar at the military base. Continuing to the Acid Lab business, which is in your Brigade 6x6, you can now name your Acid product by selecting it from a few predetermined names, and doing so will give you a 5% bonus when you go to sell. For the Auto Shop business, Auto shop staff now have better RNG for vehicle deliveries, so for those of you who hire staff to deliver client vehicles for you, the car will now have less damage or the possibility of no damage at all, which is really nice. Next up onto nerfs, the Hydra and the Laser had their explosive cannons significantly nerfed, so the range is actually still the same as before but the fire rate and the explosive damage has again been significantly reduced. So I'll be making a more detailed video on this later on, but again, only the explosive cannons have been changed on them. In terms of buffs, the Ocelot Virtue now allows you to throw sticky bombs and grenades out of it with the armor upgrade installed, so before it wouldn't allow you to, so that's a great change for sure. Now moving on to the more detailed stuff, the Avenger no longer requires you to own a facility in order to buy it, so that paywall has been removed. Plus, you can bring it into your hangar to customize it with brand new upgrades, including a thruster that you can have back there, um, even a stealth option or a, a missile lock jammer, and um, even you know homing missiles and all that, so great additions there for sure. Continuing, the limited time vehicles from the Drug Wars DLC like the 300R have now been permanently added to the website, so... And speaking of websites, for those of you who don't know, the most controversial change of this update, almost 200 cars have been removed from various websites. So we have over 60 removed from Legendary Motorsport website, over 100 from Southern San Andreas, 6 from Warstock, and one from Benny's, 
which totals approximately 186 vehicles, which is just ridiculous and unnecessary. Rockstar's supposed excuse for this is that they want to make it easier to find vehicles on the websites, which that just makes no sense. They could have added a simple search bar for each website or just better filters by vehicle class. Um, the, the real reason they did this mainly is so that they can make older vehicles FOMO content. For those of you who don't know what FOMO is, it's fear of missing out. So they're basically doing that with older vehicles so that it kind of persuades you to buy an older vehicle you might not even have wanted just because you can get it now from the Simeon's dealership, for example, or whatever. It's just a tactic they're using to try to get people to buy older vehicles just because you can't get it normally anymore. Anyways, the cooldown for payphone hits has been increased. So before it was 20 minutes and now it's 48 minutes, which is really unfortunate. A lot of people in the community are speculating that this is probably a mistake by Rockstar, but uh, honestly, when it comes to nerfing ways of making money with Rockstar, most of the time it's not a mistake. <laughs> Continuing, the aircraft carrier will no longer spawn for free mode business battles, which is interesting. RC time trials will now change daily, so instead of weekly, plus five new ones have been added to the rotation. Now to clarify here, the normal time trial, the HSW time trial, and the premium race will not change daily. Those are still weekly, so only the RC time trial changes daily. So I did make that mistake in my event week video, so apologies for that. A hold to sprint option has been added to the settings menu, which allows you to hold the button instead of rapidly tapping it to run at full speed. You can now claim all your vehicles from all your garages at once from Morse Mutual instead of annoyingly have to go to each garage individually like before. So finally they added that back in. It used to be a feature and they removed it in one of the updates. So it's finally back. Taxi work can now be done with the Eudora and the Broadway if you have the taxi livery applied on them. You can now add custom description tags for each of your garages, which is extremely useful for finding certain cars. However, there's only one tag for the recently added massive 50 car Eclipse Boulevard garage. So hopefully they separate the tags into five in the future for that one. And speaking of the Eclipse Boulevard garage, you can now request vehicles from individual floors instead of the single massive list of 50 vehicles like before. The CEO and Motorcycle Club menus have been placed behind a register as boss sub menu. I honestly think this one is kind of dumb. It's more of an organization thing for the interaction menu and just adds an extra unnecessary step to register as an MC or CEO. Map blips for properties will only appear on the minimap when you're closer to them. So this makes the minimap a lot less cluttered, which I really like. Um, since we have so many properties and businesses now, this makes a lot of sense. You can now re-request your Avenger, MOC, or Terabyte closer to you without having to return it first. The VTOL mode button for all aircraft has been changed to L3, which for those of you who don't know, that's the same button you use to press the horn in the car. So now you just hold that button instead of having to hold right on the D-pad to go into VTOL mode. Madrazo dispatch service missions can now be done solo. Your body armor will now be reverted to what you had if you quick restart a mission. A buy all option has been added to the ammunition when buying body armor. Also, when equipping body armor via the weapon wheel, it will now equip different types of armor based on how much health you have, which I think is useless since Rockstar only allows us to purchase a maximum of 10 body armor and everyone buys the super heavy armor, so I really see no point in this one, unless maybe in the future they allow us to buy 10 of every armor, that would be helpful. Anyways, the level requirement for body armor types and daily objectives has also been removed. A filter has been added in the races category, which allows you to display each race by race type to make them a lot easier to find. I really like this one because the race menu is just ridiculous by now, it's huge, so this makes it a lot easier to find the one that you want. English Dave and Tom Connors can no longer call you while you're free falling slash parachuting, 
So I can't tell you guys how many times I've gone to open my parachute close to the ground and gotten a phone call from English Dave instead. So <laughs> this is a welcome addition for sure. The orbital cannon can no longer be instantly reset or refunded. So this is to help stop the orbital cannon spam glitch. The payouts for Gerald's last play missions and the yacht missions have been increased by 25%. I guess it's something, but the payouts are still pretty terrible. The payouts on collectibles and events have been increased, but it's a very slight increase. I still don't think these are worth it. They should have been tripled in my opinion. Moving along, we have over 200 items of new clothing available, plus a couple of new hairstyles as well. Continuing, they've added some new things to the creator, so you can now set snow, whether in races, death matches, survivals, etc. Arena war props and underwater mine props are now available, which is a very welcome change. This will definitely add even more creativity to community jobs. Plus some other miscellaneous changes to the survival and deathmatch creator to make them a lot more competitive. Like for example, they've added an option which can actually disable players from climbing ladders, which I think is kind of funny. Continuing to the additions that are only for current gen, again, which is PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S. So Rockstar has added a career progress menu, which is extremely well made, I'm going to be honest here. I think Rockstar did a great job on this. There's tons of challenges and exclusive rewards like the Lamar LD Organics van for example which was previously blacklisted but now it will be available to be obtained legitimately through this challenge. Some other notable awards include single player outfits and even the Nico Bellic outfit from GTA 4 which I think is just awesome. However the challenges for most of these are extremely time consuming and some of them are pretty difficult so I don't think this is going to be for everyone, just the really like hardcore player base, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to waste my time doing most of those, but some of them I will. But uh, anyways, lastly for current gen content, we have the addition of the Vinewood Car Club, which is located at the docks, which everyone can access, but if you actually want to drive or buy any of the cars in there, you will unfortunately need a GTA Plus subscription. And lastly, they have fixed a ton of bugs and glitches for all the businesses, missions, loading screens, properties, and more. Again, I will leave a link to the full patch notes down below in the pinned comment if you want to check those out for yourself. Again, I didn't cover every little single change in this video, but I did cover most of the major ones. Anyways guys, hope this was helpful. Let me know down below in the comments what your favorite additions slash changes are so far for the new San Andreas Mercenaries DLC update. Also what you dislike the most from the update, other than the 200 cars being removed from the websites. But personally, I think this is one of the worst DLCs we've had in a while, just my personal opinion. Even worse than Drug Wars and the Criminal Enterprises update. At least those had somewhat of a decent balance between cars, missions, quality of life changes, etc. This update is pretty lackluster with questionable changes and honestly most of the car choices are pretty random and just not that great in this update. And the drip feed content is pretty lackluster too, only 4 actual cars, a helicopter and a couple bicycles, I mean really. <laughs> Plus the payouts on the new missions are like 20k which is just laughable. Overall, I'd say this is one of the most underwhelming DLCs we've had in a while. Honestly, I had my expectations pretty low for this update, but somehow Rockstar managed to go even below my low expectations. I'm just being honest here. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I tell it the way it is. Um, that's just the way I am. But anyways, guys, hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.